हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू ए डिस्कशन ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज रेगुलेशन ऑफ जीन एक्सप्रेशन इन यू कैरियोट दिस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एल ए क्यू फ्रॉम द जेनेटिक टॉपिक लॉन्ग एंसर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द जेनेटिक टॉपिक इट ऑल्सो इंक्लूड्स नंबर ऑफ बी ए क्यूज एंड एस ए क्यूज फॉर एग्जाम्पल स्प्लाइसिंग एडिटिंग एंड सो ऑन ओके वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द लैक ओपेर ऑन कॉन्सेप्ट दैट टेल्स अबाउट द रेगुलेशन ऑफ जीन एक्सप्रेशन इन प्रो कैरियोट this is particularly eukaryotic regulation of gene expression so all of you know about the constitutive or housekeeping genes housekeeping genes means they are constantly express in the cell they are known as housekeeping or constitutive genes and inducible genes or regulated genes means they are expressed in particular uh, organs or they are expressed are induced are regulated to the particular stimuli they are known as regulated genes okay here in regulation of gene expression it occurs at different levels for example dna level transcription level or translational level all of you know about the central dogma of molecular biology and how process occurs in the eukaryote how process occurs in the eukaryote yes so it is dna So this is DNA. DNA. Now this DNA, by the process of transcription, the DNA, the information which is given in the DNA is converted into primary transcript, that is hnRNA, heteronuclear. RNA, primary transcript or heteronuclear RNA. This hnRNA, heteronuclear RNA, undergoes processing that is known as post-transcriptional modification, and it is converted into mRNA, messenger RNA. It is converted into messenger RNA. Now, messenger RNA, the information in the form of trinucleotide sequence that is codons. in the mrna it is utilized for the synthesis of proteins it is utilized for the synthesis of proteins and again the proteins are modified this is known as post translational modifications post translational modification in the proteins okay so these are the events in the central dogma of molecular biology the flow of information from dna to rna to protein and then protein expressed so it is known as central dogma of molecular biology now in eukaryote this is additional step that is post transcriptional modification also post translational modification now how regulation of gene occurs how at the different levels the regulation of gene expression occurs now see these are the processes so this is transcription 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 means synthesis of mrna or synthesis of primary transcript from the dna then hnrna which is a primary transcript it is converted into mrna this process is known as post transcriptional post transcriptional modifications modifications okay and mrna is converted into proteins the codons that code for particular amino acid it is translated into peptide that is known as translation this process is known as translation and then it is subjected to post translational modifications in the protein so post translational modification the eukaryotic gene expression it is controlled or it is regulated at the level of dna this is the first at the level of dna in the transcription process this is second third and most important is post transcriptional control of gene expression this is third this is fourth at the translational level 
and this is fifth but, but minor that is post translational modification so these are the levels at which the regulation of gene expression in the eukaryotes occurs got it at the dna level at the transcriptional level at, in the post transcriptional modifications in the translation process and in the post translational modification okay so at the dna level how it is regulated how gene expression is regulated so first and most important point in the dna level is making the dna available so that includes epigenetic modification epigenetic modification this is important epigenetic epi means above genetic means gene above the gene or above the dna means without altering the nucleotide sequences the modifications occur in the genome without altering the nucleotide sequences it is known as epigenetic modification which particularly involves acetylation and methylation so epigenetic modifications that includes acetylation and methylation of histones acetylation and methylation of histones apart from the epigenetic modification remember epigenetics means above the genome here nucleotide sequences does not alter only there is chemical modification in the histone proteins so histones these are the proteins which is uh, utilized or which reacts with the dna and helps in the compaction of dna or organization of dna okay so histones or compaction or organization of dna it decreases the end to end length of dna by 10 to the power 4 fold okay so epigenetic modification then at the gene level at the dna level gene amplification gene amplification means making the copies of dna gene amplification you know then third one is gene rearrangement rearrangement okay so these are the changes at the dna level changes occurs at the dna level making the dna available mainly the most important is the epigenetic modification this is important here now at the transcription level there are certain sequences in the uh, in the transcription process when synthesis of rna from the dna there are certain sequences in the dna they are known as promoter region these sequences are known as promoter region or enhancer sequences enhancer sequences are there which helps in the transcription process or regulation of transcription process second the different transcription factors different transcription factors and third important is dna binding motifs dna binding motifs what is the role of DNA binding motifs? These motifs helps in the interaction of this transcription factor with the major and minor grooves of the DNA. So this is these are intermediates in between transcription factor and DNA. Helps in binding of transcription factor to the DNA. So at the transcription level, promoter enhancer, different transcription factors and dna binding motifs zinc finger motif leucine zipper motif helix turn helix motifs these are the different super secondary structures they help in the transcription regulation now the most important is the post translational modification it includes splicing of the mrna splicing of the mrna selective splicing of the mrna then alternate alternative splicing of mrna then alternative poly a site alternative poly a cleavage site then mrna editing editing of the mrna and mrna stability these are the important 
points in the regulation of gene expression by the post transcriptional modifications splicing of the mrna alternative splicing alternative poly adenylation cleavage site then mrna editing and mrna stability these are the important points in the post translational modification in the translation process the regulation of eukaryotic initiation factor 2 alpha and regulation of eukaryotic initiation factor 4e is important by the phosphorylation process by the phosphorylation process so these are the major mechanism involved in the regulation of gene expression in the eukaryote also there are some post translational modifications that includes the proteolysis means removal of initiator methionine also removal of some peptide and removal of signal peptide it is involved in the post translational modification also there is covalent modification uh, in the form of glycosylation addition of prosthetic group hydroxylation uh, gamma carboxylation isoprenylation so different post translational modifications are there which regulate the protein synthesis but these are the major mechanisms which are involved in the eukaryotic gene expression regulation of gene expression now one by one we will discuss see at the dna level making the dna available that epigenetic modification it is very very important all of you know that this 2 nanometer dna all of you know that this 2 nanometer dna it is organized in a cell in the nucleus it is organized in a nucleus by end to end decreasing the length of dna in association with the histone proteins so DNA, see, the major groove and minor groove, they are particularly important and they react with the histone proteins, histone octamer. So this is 2 nanometer DNA, which is organized in the nucleus. It is converted into 10 nanometer chromatin fibril, which is known as bead on string appearance of nucleosome. So it is wrapped around the nucleosome. So it is like this. It is wrapped around the nu nucleosome that is histone octamer. It is known as histone octamer. So this is octamer, histone octamer. And this is H1 histone. H1 histone bead on string appearance 10 nanometer chromatin fibril the dna is wrapped around the histone octamer by 1.75 fold of dna which constitute near about 145 to 150 base pair of the dna around the histone octamer and histone octamer it is made up of h2a h h2b then h3 h4 so repeated units means uh, two units of H2A, two of H2B, H3, H4, two, two units. So histone octamer is there and it is connected with the linker DNA with the help of histone, H1 histone protein. This is histone linker DNA is near about 30 base pair in length. So this is known as bead on string appearance, 10 nanometer fibril. Then 30 nanometer chromatin fibril 30 nanometer which composed of 6 to 7 nucleosomes 6 to 7 nucleosome then this 30 nanometer is converted into 300 nanometer of nuclear scaffold associated protein that is non condensed loop non condensed loop 700 nanometer that is condensed loop condensed loop and metaphase chromosome 1400 nanometer of metaphase chromosome so this is organized and there is decrease in end to end length of the dna so dna is will not be available for the transcription process so this is highly complex structure and dna will not available for the transcription process now 
for making the dna available there are number of modifications which are done in the histone proteins so two important remember only two histone modification all of you know the mnemonic that is rupums rupums means ribosylation ubiquity nylation then phosphorylation acetylation methylation and sumoylation these are the post translational modification uh, these are the tra uh, modification in the histone proteins now two are important here just remember these two histone acetylation acetylation of lysine in the histone tails acetylation of lysine in the histone tails that decreases the positive charge on the histone and the interaction between histone and dna decreases so that causes availability of dna so acetylation of histone will increase the gene expression acetylation of histone will increase the gene expression so acetylation of histone lysine of the histone causes the decrease in the positive charge in the histone molecule so interaction between histone and dna decreases so histone and dna interaction decreases and making the dna available making the dna available so this histone acetylation lysine acetylation of lysine in the histone tails making the dna available for the transcription process so this increases the gene expression increases the gene expression in contrast the second that is methylation of histone methylation of histone that is methylation of deoxycytosine residue in the histone it causes it is particularly in the cg rich region cg rich region of the promoter cg rich region of the promoter it causes the uh, organization of histone so making the dna means dna will not be available for the gene expression or will not be available for the transcription process so deoxycytosine of the cg rich region in the promoter region it causes dna to compact it causes dna to organize and dna will not be available for the transcription process so this methylation of histone protein it decreases the gene expression gene expression it decreases the gene expression so these are the two important epigenetic modification in the histone proteins epigenetic modification in the histone proteins that is acetylation of histone and methylation of histone also phosphorylation of histone is important for condensation of the uh, dna or organization of the dna ribosylation of the histone it is important in the repair process so these are the two important modification in the histone or epigenetic modification in the histone proteins now the third important point is gene amplification see gene amplification gene amplification means we know the amplification of signal amplified gene is amplified means making the copies of the dna gene amplification means making the copies of dna it is best understood by the methotrexate resistance in the cancer therapy now see this is gene this is a gene this is b gene so this is gene for dihydrofolate reductase enzyme this is gene for dihydrofolate reductase enzyme now how methotrexate act when methotrexate is given in the methotrexate is given suppose this is folic acid folic acid is converted into dihydrofolate 
डाइड्रोफोलेट इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू टेट्राहाइड्रोफोलेट एंड इट इज इम्पॉर्टंट इन द न्यूक्लियोटाइड सिंथेसिस टेट्राहाइड्रोफोलेट नाउ हियर एंजाइम इज दिस डाइड्रोफोलेट रिडक्टेज डाइड्रोफोलेट रिडक्टेज नाउ मिथोट्रिक्जेट विल इनिबिट मिथोट्रिक्जेट एंटी मिटाबोलाइट मिथो ट्रिक्जेट एंटी मेटाबोलाइट इट विल इनिबिट द डाइड्रोफोलेट रिडक्टेज एंजाइम एंड प्रिवेंट द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ डाइड्रोफोलेट एंड टेट्राहाइड्रोफोलेट एंड इनिबिट द न्यूक्लियोटाइड सिंथेसिस सो मिथोट्रिक्जेट विल एक्ट बाय दिस मेकेनिज्म सो दिस इज जीन फॉर डाइड्रोफोलेट रिडक्टेज दिस जीन इज एम्प्लीफाइड दिस जीन इज एम्प्लीफाइड नाउ सी this is a this is b now how it is amplified so gene is amplified a a a this is b b b gene b so this is dihydrofolate reductase gene which is amplified that will produce dihydro folate reductase and hence the treatment when we give the methotrexate there is resistance to methotrexate drug so we have to increase the dose of methotrexate after prolonged therapy because there is resistance to this methotrexate because dihydrofolate reductase gene is amplified and it produce dihydrofolate reductase so this is amplification amplified amplification of dihydrofolate reductase gene which will produce dihydrofolate reductase and methotrexate resistance will be there so this is known as gene amplification so kya kya discuss kiya humne acetylation will acetylation will increase the gene expression methylation will decrease the gene expression then gene amplification producing the copies of genes producing the copies of genes now the next one is the gene rearrangement next one is gene rearrangement in the gene rearrangement there are for example c it is uh, discussed with the help of immunoglobulin g all of you know that immunoglobulin g it is made up of heavy chain two heavy chains and two light chains immunoglobulin g it is made up of two heavy chain and two light chains okay now these two light chains of immunoglobulin genes it has variable region which is important variable region and the constant region variable region and constant region and this variable region of the light chain and heavy chain it is particularly important for binding with the antigen so there are number of antigen which are produced in the body or number of antigens are there and in response to these antigens number of antibodies they are produced in our body it is example of gene rearrangement how it is example of gene rearrangement now see for the light chain of this immunoglobulin g means for the constant region and variable region or for the variable region and constant region there are three genes now this is gene for the light chain this is gene for the light chain of immunoglobulin g light chain it has variable region and variable region it is coded by number of genes near about uh, v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 and vn now near about 300 copies of genes for variable region 300 copies of gene for the variable region 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47
and n number n number of genes means near about 300 genes for the variable region which codes for the variable region now there is joining region so five genes they code for the four five genes so j1 j2 j3 j4 j5 five genes for the joining region of joining of this variable and constant region and the genes d genes okay near about d d1 d2 d3 dn there are no, near about 10 these are five five genes so by the different combination by the different combination of gene the the copies are produced just wait so this is suppose p2 p2 j3 j3 and this is d2 so by different combination different genes are produced and different antibodies are produced so this is known as genetic rearrange by the genetic rearrangement by genetic rearrangement of the genes different genes are produced that will produce different antibodies that will produce different antibodies antibodies so these are uh, means they will produce the light chain light chain of immunoglobulin g different line light chains of immunoglobulin g by different combination this is known as genetic rearrangement another gene can be produced like v uh, v1 j2 d1 or v5 j3 d1 like this so by the different combination different antibodies are produced that is known as genetic rearrangement or gene rearrangement so at the dna level four important mechanisms are there the first one is acetylation of histone second one is the methylation of histone it is included in the epigenetic modification then gene amplification making the copies of the gene and gene rearrangement means different antibodies are produced by the different genetic rearrangement so these are the four mechanisms which are important at the dna level now at the transcription level there are three mechanism in the transcription level there are there, there is promoter region there is enhancer region uh, on the dna molecule second various transcription factors are there in eukaryotes and third one is the different dna binding motifs these are the super secondary structures now see this is double stranded dna from this double stranded dna there is synthesis of mrna from the template dna strand there is transcription start site that is plus one transcription start site and uh, upstream of this transcription start site means before this transcription start site there is minus 25 region minus 70 region minus 90 region and there are some sequences here okay so minus 25 region it is known as tata box that is t a t a a a this is tata box this is known as promoter region promoter region is a initial site for attachment of rna polymerase it is a site for attachment of rna polymerase this tata box okay there is also initiator sequence inr or downstream promoting element downstream promoter elements this region this this region it is known as promoter region in the eukaryote promoter region it is a site for attachment of rna polymerase it includes tata box initiator region and down downstream promoter elements this this is these are known as promoter elements region where rna polymerase attached and then this minus 70 region that is also known as cat box or GC reach region. This is proximal promoter region. Proximal promoter region. Promoter region. And these sequences, these are known as enhancer or repressor sequences. Enhancer 
और रिप्रेसर रिप्रेसर एलिमेंट्स एलिमेंट्स दीज आर द रेगुलेटरी एलिमेंट्स रेगुलेटरी एलिमेंट्स सो दीज आर द एलिमेंट्स ऑन द डीएनए स्टैंड दिस इज कोडिंग स्टैंड ऑफ द डीएनए दिस इज टेम्पलेट मीन्स दिस फाइव प्राइम थ्री प्राइम इज द इज ए कोडिंग स्टैंड वाइल दिस थ्री प्राइम फाइव प्राइम इज ए टेम्पलेट डीएनए स्टैंड फ्रॉम विच आर एन ए इज प्रोड्यूस सो दीज आर द डिफरेंट एलिमेंट्स इन द डीएनए विच दीज एलिमेंट्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट इन द रेगुलेशन ऑफ जीन एक्सप्रेशन सो प्रमोटर रीजन दैट इज टाटा बॉक्स इनिशिएटर सिक्वेंस एंड डाउन स्ट्रीम प्रमोटिंग एलिमेंट प्रमोटर एलिमेंट दीज आर द प्रमोटर रीजन दिस इज ए साइड फॉर अटैचमेंट ऑफ आर एन ए पॉलीमर इज दिस इज प्रोक्सिमल प्रमोटर रीजन दैट इज कैटबॉक्स एंड जी सी रीच रीजन एंड द रेगुलेटरी एलिमेंट्स एनहांसर आर रिप्रेसर एलिमेंट्स दे आर प्रेजेंट डिस्टंट फ्रॉम द दिस ट्रांसक्रिप्शन स्टार्ट साइट एंड दे आर uh present at longer distance from the transcription start site but they regulate the transcription process so th these are the different regions on the dna which regulates the transcription process then various transcription factors are there transcription factors in the eukaryotes particularly they are important in the initiation of transcription process for the formation of initiation complex they are important so what are the different factors they are important in the transcription process the first one is the tata binding protein which occupy the promoter region it binds with the tata box tata binding protein then it recruits the transcription factor 2d 2d which causes minus 100 degree bends in the dna and uh, it causes the bend in the dna so that all transcription factor can work simultaneously in a coordinated way so transcription factor 2d then transcription factor a then b then transcription factor f with rna polymerase then transcription factor e and transcription factor h these are the transcription factor 2a 2b transcription factor 2f 2e and 2h these are the different transcription factor factors so sequence is dab d a b f e h this is sequence of attachment of different transcription factor to the promoter region and forming the initiation complex forming the initiation complex this uh, tata binding protein scans the dna recognizes the promoter region and helps transcription factor 2d to attach to the promoter region and this rna polymerase it is brought by the transcription factor f and it is activated by the transcription factor h it causes the phosphorylation of carboxyl terminal domain of rna polymerase and activates the rna polymerase apart from this it has helicase activity so these are the different transcription factors which are important in the eukaryote now this transcription factor attached to the dna with the help of different motifs with the help of different motifs they are known as dna binding motifs dna binding motifs motifs so these are the super secondary structures dna binding motifs these are super secondary structure and what is role of dna binding motif it is important to attach the transcription factor in, in between interaction between the transcription factor and the major and minor grooves of the dna for that dna binding motifs they are important these are the super secondary structure examples are zinc finger motif zinc zinc finger motif domain is a tertiary structure motif is a super secondary structure then leucine zipper motif leucine zipper motif then helix turn helix helix turn helix motif and fourth one is the helix loop loop helix motif these are the important motifs and what is role of inka role kya hai motifs ka role kya hai they help in uh, binding of transcription factor to the dna so what is role they help in 
हेल्प इन बाइंडिंग ऑफ ट्रांसक्रिप्शन फैक्टर्स टू द डीएनए टू द डीएनए मींस वेरियस ट्रांसक्रिप्शन फैक्टर दे अटैच टू द डीएनए विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस मोटिव्स जिंक फिंगर मोटिव इट कंटेन जिंक एट द सेंटर इट कंटेन जिंक एट द सेंटर एंड जिंक इज अटैच विथ फोर सिक्सटीन रेसिड्यूज जिंक इज अटैच विथ फोर सिक्सटीन रेसिड्यूज और जिंक इज अटैच विथ टू सिक्सटीन एंड टू हिस्टिडिन रेसिड्यूज टू हिस्टिडिन रेसिड्यूज तो टू एंटी पैरल बीटा शीट्स कनेक्टेड टू द अल्फा हेलाइसिस विद द हेल्प ऑफ विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस जिंक एंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ द फिंगर लाइक स्ट्रक्चर विच तो विद द हेल्प ऑफ फिंगर लाइक स्ट्रक्चर एंड दिस फिंगर लाइक स्ट्रक्चर it uh, it reacts with or it it attached with the major group of the dna it attached with the major group of the dna so zinc uh, finger motif two anti parallel beta sheets connected to the al alpha helices alpha helix via the finger like structure and this finger like structure reacts with or attached with the major group of the dna so what is role of zinc finger motif it helps in binding of transcription factor to the dna example is uh, steroid receptors steroid hormone receptor and the thyroid hormone receptors they are uh, attached to the dna with the help of zinc finger motif leucine zipper motif there is leucine so this is leucine zipper motif it is like caesar it is like caesar are leucine caesar motif and every seventh amino acid in the leucine zipper motif it is leucine and they are interact with each other with the help of hydrophobic interaction between the leucine molecule and this is carboxyl terminal this is amino terminal and this amino terminal there is positively charged amino acid towards the amino terminal in the leucine zipper motif and this motif interacts with this positively charged region amino terminal region interacts with the dna major and minor group of the dna in the leucine zipper motif in helix turn helix motif two helices two helices or two alpha helices they are connected by the turn here two alpha helices connected by the loop these alpha helices reacts with the major and minor group of the dna and help in binding of various transcription factor to the dna this is role of dna binding motifs these are the super secondary structure and what is their role binding of various transcription factor to the dna with the help of these different motifs with the help of these different motifs zinc finger motif leucine zipper motif helix turn helix motif and helix loop helix motifs these are the super secondary structure so isme humne kya discuss kiya transcription mein humne kya discuss kiya at the transcription level there is region which is known as promoter region uh, then proximal promoter region and enhancer region or regulatory element on the dna on the coding strand of the dna various transcription factor they they act together for the transcription process for example d a b f e h transcription factors in the eukaryotic transcription process various dna binding motifs they helps in help in binding of transcription factor to the dna so this is at the transcription level now the most important that is post transcriptional modification in the mrna or post transcriptional modifications in the heteronuclear rna post transcriptional modifications all of you know that there are many post transcriptional modification that is 5 prime capping capping with methyl uh, gonosine triphosphate cap poly a uh, tail formation with the help of polyadenylate polymerase 85 to 250 poly a nucleotides or adenine nucleotides are added by the polyadenylate polymerase but apart from these which are important in the regulation of gene expression that includes splicing the first one is the splicing what is meaning of splicing means exons are joined together exons are joined together and introns are removed suppose this is exon 1 this is exon 2 exon 1 this is exon 2 so these are the coding regions on the mrna and this is intron intron means non coding intron 
means non coding region or intervening sequences so they are too long intron introns are too long exons are short coding sequences on the mrna so this is 5 prime end this is 3 prime end what is the meaning of splicing in splicing these two exons are joined together and intron is removed so what are the sequences in the splicing first 5 prime cut so this site is cut first then second there is formation of lariat this is a branch point this is adenine nucleotide at the branch point this is conine so there is branch point and this is known as lariat formation so this is exon 1 this is exon 2 lariat formation loop formation is there then three prime cut occurs three prime cut occurs, occurs then removal of this loop and joining of these exons removal of the intron and joining of the exon occurs so this is exon 1 exon 2 this is mrna matured rna splicing of exon together coding region splice together and intron is removed this is this can be intrinsic mechanism or by the mechanism that is known as spliceosome mediated splicing with the help of small nuclear rna that is u1 u2 u4 u5 and u6 these are the small nuclear rnas and various ribonucleoproteins they are involved in the splicing process so this is known as splicing so by the selective splicing the mrna activity can be regulated how what is selective splicing now see selective splicing we'll discuss on another page see this is exon 1 exon 2 exon 3 so exon 1 exon 2 and exon 3 three exons are there so what is selective splicing selective splicing in the selective splicing the exon 1 and exon 3 splice together by re remove removing or neglecting the exon 2 so that is known as selective splicing so exon 1 and exon 3 will splice together that, that will produce different mrna that will produce variability in the mrna so this is how selective splicing is done selective splicing second one is the alternate splicing alternative splicing in alternative splicing means there is alternative 5 prime or 3 prime cut site means suppose for example this is this is intron this is intron this is a a u a a a a u a a and many adenylate okay so this is mrna this is primary transcript this is exon 1 and exon 2 splice together okay this is selective splicing now alternative splicing in alternative splicing the alternative 5 prime exon 1 2 3 1 2 3 these are the exons in the alternative 5, five prime site so this part so it is removed so there is connection between this and this and this and this connected so this is known as alternative 5 prime slide 5 prime cut site 
so by removing this part of the exon the different mrna is produced there is production uh, there is mrna variability by the alternative splicing alter alternative 5 prime splicing or alternative 3 prime splicing will be there so that will produce different mrna by alternative splicing if you change the sequence cutting sequence okay then third important is polyadenylation cleavage alternative polyadenylation cleavage site alternative polyadenylation cleavage site if you change this cleavage size site that will also produce different mrna see exon 1 exon 2 exon 3 and one is removed a a u a a and a to the power n miss a n a, uh, a n so one alternative polyadenylation cleavage site different mrna is produced so that is known as polyadenylation uh, alternative polyadenylation cleavage site so splicing ka matlab hota hai exon ko jod dena aur intron ko remove karna that is known as splicing selective splicing matlab isne kya kiya exon 2 ko chhod diya exon 1 or 3 ko join kar diya selective splicing that will produce different mrna then alternative splicing ye 5 prime site jo hai iski ye agar sequence mein thoda sa usne alter kar diya that will produce different mrna ya to 3 prime site pe thoda sa alter kar diya that will produce different mrna and alternative polyadenylation cleavage site if ye bhi site agar usne change kar diya kuch remove kar diya ek ye pura a a u a a isne remove kar diya that will produce different mrna that will produce mrna variability so this is how the M various types of mrna mrnas are produced from the primary transcript various types of mrna they are produced from the primary transcript so these are the mechanism post transcriptional mechanism in the regulation of gene expression splicing then second is mrna editing this is very very important mrna editing so by this process by this alternative splicing different tissue specific isoforms are produced different proteins are produced Be different tissue specific isoforms of different proteins are produced by this alternative splicing now mrna editing all of you know the example well known example of apo b48 apo b48 and apo b100 apo b100 so apo b48 it is produced by the intestine it is produced by the intestine it is produced by the liver here 100% synthesis occurs in the liver 100% synthesis of protein occurs while here premature termination of protein synthesis occurs in the intestine from the same mrna two different proteins are produced apo b48 apo b100 this is in the intestine this is in the liver this is because of this caa codon which is converted into uaa caa is converted into u a a and this is a stop codon stop codon at the 6666 position at the 6666 position and only 48 percent of protein is produced that is known as apo b48 and it is incorporated into chylomicron it is incorporated into chylomicron while the same mrna in the liver 100 percent protein synthesis occur and apo b100 it is incorporated into vldl ldl vldl ldl ideal apo b100 in the liver so here complete 100 percent is synthesized it is 100 here 48 percent is synthesized because the caa it is converted into uaa and premature truncation of protein synthesis occurs so from the same mrna two different proteins are produced by the mrna editing in the intestine and in the liver okay this is example of mrna editing now mrna stability mrna stability the mrna stability is increased to produce particular protein so that the particular protein is continuously produced in the cell 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल सी इन द आयरन डिफिशियंसी एनिमिया आयरन डिफिशियंसी एनिमिया वेन आयरन इज लो देर इज इंक्रीज ट्रांसफेर इन रिसेप्टर देर इज इंक्रीज ट्रांसफेर इन रिसेप्टर वेन देर इज लो आयरन लेवल्स फॉर इट इज प्रेजेंट द आयरन रेगुलेटरी एलिमेंट दिस इज एम आर एन ए द आयरन रेगुलेटरी एलिमेंट इट इज प्रेजेंट ऑन थ्री प्राइम अनट्रांसलेटेड रीजन दिस इज थ्री प्राइम रीजन दिस इज फाइव प्राइम रीजन दिस इज ट्रांसफेर इन रिसेप्टर एम आर एन ए ट्रांसफेर इन रिसेप्टर एम आर एन ए एंड देर इज आयरन रिस्पॉन्सिव एलिमेंट विच इज प्रेजेंट ऑन थ्री प्राइम अनट्रांसलेटेड रीजन ऑफ द एम आर एन ए थ्री प्राइम अनट्रांसलेटेड रीजन ऑफ द एम आर एन ए देर इज आयरन रिस्पॉन्सिव एलिमेंट इज प्रेजेंट ओके नाउ द आयरन रेगुलेटरी प्रोटीन वेन एवर देर इज लो आयरन डिक्रीज इन द आयरन द आयरन रिस्पॉन्सिव एलिमेंट मीन्स आयरन रेगुलेटरी प्रोटीन आयरन रेगुलेटरी प्रोटीन गेट अटैच टू दिस आयरन रिस्पॉन्सिव एलिमेंट आयरन रेगुलेटरी प्रोटीन गेट अटैच टू आयरन रिस्पॉन्सिव एलिमेंट एंड इंक्रीजेस द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ दिस एम आर एन ए सो दिस विल बी अवेलेबल फॉर लॉन्गर ड्यूरेशन ऑफ टाइम मीन्स एम आर एन ए इज स्टेबल नाउ एंड इट विल थ्रू द ट्रांसलेशन इट विल प्रोड्यूस ट्रांसफेर इन रिसेप्टर्स इट विल प्रोड्यूस ट्रांसफेर इन रिसेप्टर so whenever there is iron low iron or iron deficiency anemia there is increased synthesis of transferrin receptors via the make via making the mrna stable for longer duration of time so that the particular protein is produced in the cell so that is known as increasing mrna stability so what are the post transcriptional modification in the regulation of gene expression द स्प्लाइसिंग मतलब एक्जॉन को एक जगह पे ज्वाइन कर देना और इंट्रॉन को रिमूव करना सिलेक्टिव स्प्लाइसिंग मतलब एक आधी एक्जॉन को छोड़ देने का और दो एक्जॉन ज्वाइन कर देने का सिलेक्टिव स्प्लाइसिंग देन अल्टरनेट स्प्लाइसिंग कुछ तो भी क्लीवेज साइट में अगर चेंज कर दिया तो डिफरेंट एम आर एन ए प्रोड्यूस करेगा दैट विल प्रोड्यूस डिफरेंट टिश्यू स्पेसिफिक आइसोफॉर्म ऑफ द प्रोटीन्स ओके अल्टरनेटिव स्प्लाइसिंग देन अल्टरनेटिव पॉलीआडेनिलेशन क्लीवेज साइट then mrna editing that is apo b 48 apo b 100 and mrna stability transferrin receptor protein production of transferrin receptors example of mrna stability these are the post transcriptional modifications done in the uh, for regulation of gene expression post transcriptional modification in the heteronuclear rna or primary transcript for the regulation of gene expression now how the Uh, translation is regulated by the simple two different factors translation is regulated regulation of translation regulation of eukaryotic initiation factor 2 it is regulated and second important thing is regulation of eukaryotic initiation factor 4e this 4e recognizes the cap on the mrna it helps in recognition of cap recognition of cap on the mrna 4e and eukaryotic initiation factor 2 it is important for the initiation process initiation process it is important so by the phosphorylation by the phosphorylation of this eukaryotic initiation factor 2 it causes inactivation inactivation of this factor and inhibit the initiation process but by the phosphorylation of this 4e it becomes active it becomes active so this is how this is translation is regulated with the help of this two factor eukaryotic initiation factor 2 by the phosphorylation there is inactivation of this uh, process initiation of uh, translation process and by phosphorylation of 4e factor 4e which is important in the recognition of cap it is a uh, it is a component of 4f complex which binds with the cap of the mrna so it is by phosphorylation this factor becomes uh, active and it is attached or it recognizes the cap of the mrna so which which is important for the also important for the initiation of the uh, initiation of the 
translation process. So they are done with the help of particular kinases. The phosphorylation it is done with the help of particular kinases. So this is how translation is regulated. There are number of post-translational modifications which include the proteolysis, removal of initiator methionine, then uh, uh, proteolysis or cleaving of the peptide, small peptide, cleaving of the signal peptide and various post-translational modifications are there which can control the gene expression. So, summarizing the gene expression, see, summarizing the gene expression, this is DNA, DNA is transcribed into primary transcript that is HNRNA, HNRNA via the post transcriptional modification, it is converted into mRNA. The codons, the genetic information which is present in the form of codon, it is utilized for the protein synthesis, this process is known as translation and various post translational modifications are there in the proteins. So, there are different levels for the regulation of gene expression, one at the DNA level, then transcription level, post transcriptional level, translational level and post translational modifications. The, uh, these are the five stages at which the regulation of gene expression is done. The most important is the epigenetic modification and post translational modifications. In the epigenetic modification, the without altering the nucleotide sequence, epi means above, genetic means genome, without altering the DNA sequence, the reversible heritable chemical modification in the histone proteins are done. For example, acetylation will increase the gene expression and methylation will decrease the gene expression. Gene amplification means amplification of genetic material is done. The methotrexate resistance uh, is the example of gene amplification. Then gene rearrangement, production of various antibodies in response to various antigen in our body is the example of gene rearrangement. Okay. Then in the transcription process, the various factors are there, promoter region, then enhancer region is there on the DNA strand, then various transcription factors, for example, transcription factor D, A, B, F, E, H, these are the various transcription factor which attach to the DNA and DNA binding motifs, these are the super secondary structure which helps in attachment of this transcription factor to the DNA. So, DNA binding motif that is zinc finger motif, leucine zipper motif, helix turn helix and helix loop helix motifs. What is the role of this DNA binding motifs? Attachment of various transcription factors or regulators to the DNA with the help of these motifs. So, these are the transcriptional modification or transcriptional regulation. Then post transcriptional regulation that includes splicing, splicing matlab exon ko matlab coding region ko join kar dena, selective splicing, alternative splicing, alternative 5 prime splicing, alternative 3 prime splicing, then alternative poly A cleavage site, then mRNA editing that is APOB48, APOB100 is the example of mRNA editing and thus mRNA stability. Uh, increased production of transferrin receptors by making the mRNA stable is the example of mRNA stability. So, variability in the mRNA is produced which is responsible for production of different proteins. Then translation, it is regulated by regulating the eukaryotic initiation factor 2 alpha and eukaryotic initiation factor 4 e. It is important in the initiation process while it is important in the recognition of cap of the mRNA 4 e. These two factors are regulated by the phosphorylation. By the phosphorylation, this factor is uh, inactivated and by phosphorylation, this factor is activated and that in this way, the regulation of gene expression occur at the translational level. There are number of post translational modification, modification which incl includes the cleavage of initiator methionine, matlab pahila jo har bar methionine hi pahila rehta, to usko nikal dete, ya to removal of signal peptide, har protein jab banta hai, to usko ek signal add kiya jata, to wo signal nikal dete, wo uske location pe jane ke baad, or then uh, the proteolysis, for example, some uh, proteins are activated by removing the uh, in each, uh, some peptide part and some covalent modification in the proteins are done in the post translational modification but this is uh, the this is not the major mechanism of regulation of gene expression this epigenetic mechanism 
and the post transcriptional modifications these are the important mechanism also at the transcription level these are the major mechanisms of regulation of gene expression so you may get this question as a long answer question in your university examination and don't skip this topic this is very very important for your university examination so keep watching thank you